Hey everyone and welcome back to Fusion Studios and this is definitely not a beginner tutorial for sure and right now if you're facing any kind of bigger noise issues so I'm really sorry for that but they are not in my hands so really, really sorry apologize for that you can see I have this node tree over here all of the things are separated so like these are nodes by the way if you're wondering these are sticky nodes which I'm using as dividers for three separate uh, node graphs you can say first one is for the background and as well as all the files which i have second one is for this one this second uh file basically open file okay and lastly here you can see all the lighting is done so if i zoom here this is where the lighting is done and all the post processing stuff so without post processing it is something like this and after you can see the difference so let's begin one by one i'll do the breakdown okay because the notary is really really big and obviously i can't make a tutorial on it but if you want to see that that's present on the patreon so please go and check that out all right first things first so let us we'll be going slow okay so that you can grasp it really really nicely we have the background first so if i just view this we have the background and the files and everything is made from scratch by the way okay literally everything here you can see is made from scratch yes the background wood texture is also made from scratch with this fast noise uh what i also thought to do was using an image instead of the texture which i made in fastness you can see i have used gradient in uni the gradient color palette looks something like this and it is set to repeat so that i have a lot of variations in my image and in noise the settings are somewhat like this if i reduce the detail then it will be a little bit you know zoomed in version you can say but if i increased it like if i increase it a little bit i can set it to five i think five is best then we have some more details in the wood basically and in contrast also you can see some variations with color with brightness again variations and i have reduced the x scale to three okay so i want to make it something like this like stretched so that it looks perfect as this image okay so yeah let me first show you the image also i forgot to do that so in the image you can see we have something like this but as you can see the image is pretty low resolution so because of that and i also even tried you know like setting the merge edges to wrap if i set it to canvas so basically it's like if i show you this so you can see the real resolution in a full hd canvas is something like this like of the image you can see the size is set to one so it's really low resolution so what i thought i'll change it to wrap and yeah it worked out so if i just show you over here like it worked because of the lighting we have over here uh all of it is not lit and you know we have the spotlight sort of effect so because of that we can see that we can say that it's worth but if i show you this node you can see that there is a lot of you know repetition happening and when we were transitioning so in this light also it was you know showing up so if we come after 120 you can see over right here right just do it you can see this is showing up so i'm really sorry for the background noise again so it's showing up basically so tiling is happening basically this is called tiling if you know then you know so i was not happy with it so what i thought is let's make our own wood texture obviously it will not look that great we can make it look that great if i spend a little bit more time though but it looks something like this and you know what's the best part of it you can increase its scale as much as you want so you can literally come here and type 160 and then here type 6 and you can just go all the way up and it will not be tiled so this is a great thing about it of procedural texturing and with the fast noise we were able to do that okay this is just the one thing i i told you this is going to be a long one so yeah <clears throat> then after it i just applied a little bit of blur you know 0.7 is the value because if i zoom here you can see some pixels but in the blur it was like pretty much able to blur that out 
Then with sharpen, again sharpening it, the amount is very low, 0.25 again. And with brightness and contrast, I just reduce the lift. That is it. Even I can like do something like this, you know, if I wanna like bring it out a little bit and all that sort of stuff. So basically you can do that, do that in brightness contrast. So that's why we have this node over here. After brightness contrast, we have the color corrector. I don't know why I have put it here. Maybe because of the, you know, changing the color of it. But I didn't do anything over here, but still. I just put it there in case if you want to do some changes so we can after that we have this transform again nothing much in this transform but if you want to rotate it and you know do some stuff like that so we can do that over there then just putting it on a bigger round uh this is done because of the image because i also told you that we have the option to put the image also so in this image if we didn't have this big round so it will be this low resolution but because of this big round, we have a canvas on which we are putting the repeated, like repeated images. Okay. But in the case of fast noise, we don't need that because fast noise already comes with a full HD canvas. Okay. And you can change all that in its image settings. So yeah, that's pretty much it. After that, we have the case files. Okay. How did I make it? So again, if you have watched the Magnus Media tutorial series, then you might know you can create all this from the like scratch. See, when we are beginners, so we tend to think, how will we make something like this from scratch? You know, it's very difficult for us. We tend to use images. So use images. It's a good thing. But just for the textures of the object, whatever you are using. So I would recommend use images for the texture only. Other than that, use the mask nodes and with that you can create anything so how did i make it so let me show you just quickly first things first i have this rectangle okay simple basic rectangle something like this the settings are like this then another rectangle what this rectangle is doing basically its paint mode is set to subtract subtract so that's why it's subtracting it wherever it is put it will subtract the previous mask. same thing is in with this one and it's also subtracting this then i'm just plugging it in to this background which color is set to something like you know the color which you see in cardboard so the same color is set over here then we have this rectangle you can see this plain thin line actually the border width is in minus but the soft edge is higher so because of that we have this thin line if i just disable this checker and delay so you can see in this background we do have that line but it's really really like over here you can if you can see you might not be able to see this so if i just put a go into the merge so you can see for this line before that it was just plain but with this line we now have this sort of this separate area so it's creating that basically so the color is this background is the same background of this one but it's just uh the value is really low so because of that we are getting this darkened color part and this rectangle is something like this and because let me just again uncheck check and delay it was overlapping it you know going beyond this we don't want to do that obviously so what i did was i took this background and put it into the mask of this merge and with the help of that you can see it pretty much cut that out after that we have the drop shadow so without drop shadow if you see so nothing just for a little shadow you can say ambient occlusion so if you know what is ambient occlusion so it's for that and why did i add it because i knew that i will put stuff uh, beneath it so that's why i added this drop shadow okay then after that this was the front cover then let's talk about the back cover so oh i didn't name it let me name it real quick back cover just like that first things first I have this image. This is a paper image. I have this image. This is also a paper image. I merged both out. Okay, something like this. Again, setting edges to wrap because the resolution of this image is really, really low. You can see 1300 by 1300. And the image resolution of this paper one is really high. So, yeah, that's it. And with brightness contrast, again, doing the same thing which I told you. So, something like this. Okay. Bringing the higher part out. Then putting them those onto this canvas. Uh, full HD canvas but here's the thing which you can see so what is happening is basically 
first of all in this merge again the edges are set to wrap that's why you can see they are repeating because it's covering this much area and the size is really low okay but still is it's been masked out and why is that see i told you that we made another rectangular mask for the back cover so something like this we have this rectangle then we have this rectangle and both are set to merge okay so in this paint mode is set to merge that's why it's not subtracting but over here this was subtracting so yeah that's it then in this background again putting into the effect mask of this background again this is the same background as this one you know the same color and after this background what we are doing is basically we are taking this uh paper and putting it on top of this background with the help of this merge as you can see over here and if i remove this mask then you can see i tiled it a lot okay and after this rectangle i used a transform to again transform it a bit and put it into this effect mask so right now this is like this and if i mask it out boom we got ourselves the paper i know it's like too much style right now but it was worth it then putting it on top of this background so if i remove it it's pretty simple right if I just also remove this so again simple rectangle then this rectangle if I show you the settings and the shape of it so it's something like this then putting it onto this background simple right we got the back cover we got the front cover after that I added this on front cover I just told you that now to add the drop shadow what I did was okay so and then the paper so how did I added the paper on top of this background if I add it like this, it will be like this because like, I don't want to put this with paper on that little cardboard area. So for that, I will use this triangle to mask it out. So I took that, put into as the input, all right. And in the transform, I played with X size and Y size. And in the merge tool, you can see both of these are merged on top. Then after it on merge 10, I am just putting all these together. But I also wanted to add drop shadow, right? And I did add it. The thing is, I want to mask this drop shadow like onto this cardboard area. So that's why I took this rectangular mask and put into the mask of drop shadow and see what happens if I remove it. And if I put it, see, why did I do that? Because we will like, if I just remove this, okay, we will anyways add a drop shadow over here onto our uh, final image okay so i just want a shadow like an ambient inclusion sort of thing happening after the first cover okay so that we get some depth in our image so that is why i add a drop shadow over here and mask it out onto the first layer only i think it's pretty much clear till now after that what i did was added some text it's time for some text so first text oh okay so i added this merge right away okay let me just disable all this uh maybe enable this and then disable this and in text one you can see the font is arial i guess that it's pretty much present in all the systems but whatever the font is arial and the color is black and the size is this much and also it's x and y position is set to something like this it's literally like i didn't even change any other setting it's that much only after that another text i write something like wrote something over here font is again same like pretty much same things just copy pasting that you can even see it is text one underscore one it happens only when we copy a text uh copy a node okay then merging both of these together then putting all that onto this file and after that i use the grid node to basically create a table sort of structure so what I did was I literally searched on Google just like case file that is it and then I just went with all of these like I just you can even see over here police department case file you have this table sort of structure and the logo of it you know something like that so I pretty much just copied nothing else so yeah that's it in this grid the settings are something like this and you have a table like structure okay after it what i did was i added the texture you can see before it it is 
pretty much plain okay not much is happening over here but once i added this texture it just changes the whole game why let me show you so we have this cardboard texture again resolution is small we have this transform in this transform what i did was i changed its angle i rotated it changed the edges to wrap and also played with the x and y values so you know all that stuff and decrease its size and all that and in color character desaturated a bit and boom we got also this and it's really really cool technique by the way then i wanted some texture to appear a little bit more so for that i have this contrast pop for that you can even see all the settings over here and i think the contrast pop did a lot because like in the texture area you can see and even on the borders of it there's a lot of texture popping out in this image and that's all because of the contrast pop node so it's with that then again with the top shadow adding the shadow for the like beneath this uh file you know how to create more files that was done with this duplicate in this duplicate increase the copies don't mess with the controls over here now you're done you have increased the copies that's it come to the jitter panel mess with it play with it whatever setting you find the best just do that after that nothing i just showed you the background then merging it out with the background and boom you got yourself this pretty cool looking comp right there but it's really flat so we will play with the lighting but later after this a transform node why we were still here to 110 you can see everything is pretty static but after that boom what is this so let me tell you what is this <laughs> and also the transform seven edges is set to canvas not wrap so how does this background is like falling up because in this merge we set the edges to wrap okay like prior to it after that i just added these merge i don't know why but it, like in case if i want to add something you know, so you know for that then we are pretty much done with the okay so let's just stick there for a moment and i think everything is done so again recapping the first part nothing we need the background just created the background pretty much really cool after that we need the file so adding mask on mask on mask on background so you have this then again adding some more elements we have the first cover after that we have this again mask a mask and putting on top we have the background cover after that uh merging it like merging all those together and also yeah uh paper does the same technique masking it out masking the paper onto the area which you want you have the paper then merging both both of these together and applying a drop shadow after the first cover so that we have some uh shadow you know mimicking just real life nothing else uh and it's very lame to be honest not that great because in cgi you can do much much things but again it's really fast so it depends you know then uh some text onto this file then again some elements onto the file which you want to stick to it texturing okay by adding the images and masking it out again some another notes to bring out the texture a little bit more adding some shadows duplicated for some randomness and if you want the same subject to appear again and again then with that background merge it on top merge this case files on top and that's it that's pretty much you are like done with the first half of the image yeah literally first half that's it for the first one